So this morning, we are looking at divine direction. We want to begin this series from where our father stopped. What is divine direction? What do we understand by God's divine direction? Hallelujah. Because the understanding of what this is and why we need it would motivate us, would spur us on to pant for it. There's a general cliche that when you don't know the essence of something, abuse is inevitable. If you don't know the importance of something, then you might not aspire to get it because you would not value it. But when you know, when you come to the realization of the need for something, then the way you run after it will be different from the person who do not understand the value for it. So throughout the month of August, by the grace of God, God is expounding, God is set to expound to us divine direction. And not only to expound it to us, but to make sure that every one of us begins to hear God clearly in the name of Jesus. And that not only that, we would also have discipline to be able to follow his instructions. It is not only enough for God to speak to us. God speaks to a lot of us. But one of the challenges some have is that they've not been able to first and foremost recognize the voice of God and miss the voices that speaks to them. And the second one is those who even recognize the voice of God finds it difficult to follow the dictates and the instructions of God. So this month, for anyone who still do not recognize the voice of God, the voice of God will become audible to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. So this morning we are starting out with the first definition of divine direction. What is divine direction? It is God's guidance. Please, I want us to, I want us to pay attention. It is God's guidance, guiding our decision and steps per time as we seek his will for our lives. Both our personal life, in our family, in our career, and in ministry, in every facet of our life, it is God's divine guidance, guiding our decision and each step that we take. A lot of people have missed it in life because they have not followed the guidance of God. Making decisions, every second we make decisions, whether consciously or unconsciously. Your decision to come to church this morning is a decision you made. Whether you did it willingly or not, it is a decision. The kind of clothes you are putting on this morning is a decision. Every second of the day, we are faced with making decisions of life. And each of these decisions is what eventually summarizes our lives. The decisions you make per second as to where to go, the decisions you make per minute as to what to do, the decisions you make every minute of the day as you want your day to go is what summarizes the entirety of our existence. And this morning we are saying the factor that guarantees proper direction and focus is the God factor. For every direction we take, thank you, for every step we take, the place of God cannot be overemphasized. And as we go deeper in this session, we are going to, by the grace of God, expound to us that God is interested in every second of our lives. 
God is interested in every minute of our lives. God is interested in everything we do part time. For we have come at some point to, to the conclusion that it is only major decisions of life that we need God to um, guide us on. That is wrong. Even up to the clothing you wear, God is interested in it. You'd be surprised. God said, I will keep you and no hair of your head will fall down. No single strand of the hair of your head will fall down without him knowing. That shows the extent to which God is particular about everything that pertains to us. So the divine guidance we see while making each decisions of our lives, where to go to, what to do, what to eat, Do you know God is even interested in what we eat? So that you don't just wake up one day and you eat something and throughout the day you are having running stomach and you have an interview that day and they are interviewing you, your stomach is rumbling and the interviewer is looking at you that what is wrong with this man? Or you are not just yourself. Inside the AC you are sweating. Hallelujah. Do you know little things like this can affect greater things? That is why we must be particular about getting God involved in everything we do. Everything. The Bible says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. In all your ways. All. All. Not some part of your ways. Let's open our Bible to Isaiah 30 verse 21. It's one of the anchor scriptures for this month. Isaiah 30 verse 21. And thou shalt, and thine ears shall hear your voice. A word behind thee saying, this is the way. Walk ye in heat. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, may your ears not be blocked. Amen. When that voice is coming to you, when that word is coming to you, may you hear in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is divine direction. God is speaking to us every minute. God is speaking to us every hour. But are we getting the voice of God? You would hear a voice. A word behind it saying this is the way working it. There's, there is a popular, there's a popular cliche that says all way in a way. Not all way is a way. You know why? Because Proverbs 14 verse 12. And Proverbs 16 verse 29 says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. There are ways that seems like the right way. When you consider, when you consider the planning and the thoughts and um, the circumstances around some of your plans, you realize, you come to the conclusion that, okay, this is the right way. I'll give us an example. You want to build a house. You have the resources available at your capacity. And then at the point of building, you just decide, okay, I'll get this land at this social location and I'll start building this particular house on it. And so everything seems right. Everything seems perfect. That yes, this is what I should do. But that way that seems right, is it, is it from God? 
Is it what God is saying about the finance that is available in your hands? How be it that you begin to build and you realize maybe later on that that land is not even a good land? But from your calculations, everything seems to be perfect. There is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof is destruction. The end thereof is a way of death. We need to hear from God for everything. That is guidance from God. And we begin to master the art of understanding what the voice of God is. How many of us have been in situations? You have been in situations where you realize, okay, you are supposed to go out, to go do some things. And the voice tells you not to go. But you decide to go. And something negative happens. Not necessarily negative, but you are unable to achieve your aim. And then you stay and realize, ah, and something told me not to go. How many of us have been in that situation before? You know why? Because God continually speaks to us. And a lot of us are quite stubborn. You have planned, and because you have planned and everything seems perfect, you decide nothing can stop me. You want to travel. Something tells you, don't travel. But you just want to get there. Especially when, when it comes to the issue of money. Hallelujah. Ah, I've got to be coming to Akure. The money is ready. Oh yeah, come. You just wake up, babe. Akure, yeah. Hallelujah. Without even consulting God. And they said, he's ready, I'm off. Only for you to get to Akura and they tell you, ah, the person that is supposed to sign it just left. And he has gone to Benin. Just a waste of time. How that we must consult God in everything we do. And there is a voice speaking to you behind your ears, saying this is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. The scripture says, God committed himself to instructing us. He says, I will instruct you in the way which thou shalt go. And if everything, if everything in this world goes, the word of God will not go without being fulfilled. And if there is a break in the results of a covenant, we should trace it back to man because God can never fail. If God says, I will bless you, it becomes a covenant. If God says, I will instruct you, it becomes a covenant. If anything happens along the line, then trace, trace the line. Who didn't get it right? It can never be God. You would always trace it back to yourself. Amen. Amen. May God open our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. To know that we need God in everything. And the cry of my heart this morning is that we will be able to recognize the voice of God. I think that is the beginning. Even as you are seated, I know there are like four voices speaking to you at this time. One is, one is reminding you, ah, did you lock the door when you left the house? Another one is saying, what will you eat when you finish from church? Another one is listening to the message. Another one is already planning for the new week. So in the midst of all these voices, how do you come down to hear the voice of God? How do you settle down to know, okay, this is what God is saying at this moment? I think that is where we should start from.
So that while God is speaking to us, we are not speaking to ourselves. We create, we, we create the avenue and the enabling environment for easy access of God's voice into our lives. The scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Every other thing will be added. But that seems to be like the most difficult passage of the Bible. Hallelujah. That what we do consistently is to seek every other thing while we, reg- we relegate the most important thing to the last. The, the, the environment is structured in such a way that um, the, God, the God issue is the last. While you are seated, you are already planning... Uh, this is my boss. I didn't finish this assignment on Friday. I must finish it first thing, first thing when I resume to work. You are not resuming to work tomorrow. You are resuming to work on Wednesday. But it's this time that you are in the presence of God that that assignment will come to your head. Hallelujah. When you leave the church, you will not remember again. You will not remember again. So while there are external forces competing with us, there are also internal voices competing with the voice of God. But how do we see the shaft from the weed? How do we get into proper alignment with God? Such that as the word comes, we receive it and we run with it. Divine direction. Amen. 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 You won't miss that voice this month and for the rest of your lives in the name of Jesus. Divine direction is a lifetime demand. It is not what you ask for once in a while. Psalm 119 verse 105. Important scripture of the Bible. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. The question you ask yourself is why do your feet need a lamp? By the design of the Bible, by the design of creation, your feet is what takes each step. So for every step you take, your feet must be guided by light so that you don't mistake your steps. For each step. And the word is a lamp to each step you take. But you know a path is a long path. The light of God shines on your path so that along the long journey, you don't fall down and you are destroyed. You don't stumble and fall. So your feet, every step needs the illumination of God. And even the long path that you are treading, that can take forever, also needs the light. Such that our steps are guided by God and our destiny is secured in the word of God. Amen. Amen. So we need the word of God. For each second of our lives. What is the de- second definition? What is the second definition of God's divine direction? It is God's direct instruction to a person or a people independent of them. Amen. Amen. God's direct instructions. Amen. The instructions of God comes directly.
the instructions of God is not a quadratic equation. Or what are those equations that you have to keep solving and solving before you get to the end? Very difficult. You, you, you just, oh, it's not calculus. Don't begin to crack your head and crack your head. It's, it's clear. It's either you get it or you don't get it. When Jesus healed that blind man, Jesus told him, what do you see? He said, I, I see men like three. I, I, cannot, I cannot get it clearly. The thing was still doing him, blah, blah. But God's divine direction are clear instructions from God telling us what to do. Numbers 9 verse 23. This wonderful passage of the scripture. Numbers 9 verse 23. Numbers 9 verse 23 And the commandment of the Lord At the commandment of the Lord They rested in the tent And at the commandment of the Lord They journeyed They kept the charge of the Lord At the commandment Of the Lord by the hand of Moses The children of Israel were taking Each step at the commandment of God Say, oh, Stop here they stop and they sleep in tents. The following morning, start moving. They start. Clear instructions from God. If you look at Genesis 26 from verse 1, the scripture was um, speaking about Isaac. How that God told him to leave, to leave the land and go to the lands of the Philistines. Because there was famine in the land. And immediately the instructions came clearly. God speaks to us clearly. Everything from the scriptures tells us that God speaks to us clearly. It is now left to us to get clearly that voice of God. God's guidance comes in form of instruction which must be taken for life. Proverbs 4, 13. I'll come back to this verse. Proverbs 4, 13. Hallelujah. I want us to read this verse together. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we read it together again? Take fast hold of instruction. Keep her. What is the precious thing you want to keep? Give me examples. What is that thing you know you cherish and you want to keep? Give me one example. Sir? I can't hear you. Man of God, you are in the spirit. Aha, thank you. You know how you keep your, your degree certificate? Or are you... Yes. Bed certificate, you can even still do affidavits. But that your degree certificate. The first one you collected, you know the stress you went through to collect it. So you don't want to go through it again. That is how God said you should keep instructions. Take hold of instructions. For it is your life. So your life is not in the tie you put on. Your life is in the instructions of God you hold on to. Your life is not in the car you drive. Your life is in the instructions of God you hold on to. That is your life. Your life is not in the number of children you have. Ha, that these are my future. No, that is not your life. Your life is the instructions of God you hold on to. 
So ask yourself, which of the instructions of God have I held on to tenaciously? To guide because it is my life. Which of the instructions of God? We are going to go further and um, explain to us why do we need divine direction. I think we need to also speak to ourselves. Why do we need divine direction? This emphasis on divine direction, why is it so important to us? The first reason why you need divine direction is so that you can live. Pastor would continually emphasize that there is a way you will live and you will live with zero mistakes. Has it happened to you before that um, you are supposed to do something, you are supposed to execute a project, and immediately you finish doing it, you just, ah, I would have done it better like this. Oh. Has it happened to you before? Ah, now why did I do it like this? Ah, I could have done it like this. That there is a better way of doing it, which we did not know at the point of executing what we were executing. Ah, oh God, ah, I should have done it like this. That is the better way. But with God's divine direction, you do it the best way the first time. Because while you are planning it, God of heaven is ordering your steps. We need divine direction to guarantee cheap victories. Amen. Cheap victories in all battles of life. The battle a lot of people are fighting, there are some people that are living beyond battles. They live beyond generational costs. They live beyond poverty. And you begin to wonder, are these people also part of us? When you align yourself to the guidance of God, then how can you get it wrong? How can you fail? How can you miss it when it is God directing you? The only way you will miss it after you hear God is for you to stubbornly refuse to follow that instruction. That is the only way you can miss it. But if you stay on the instructions of God, you cannot miss it. Impossible. Impossible. Cheap victories. 1 Samuel 23 2. And David inquired of the Lord that should he go after the Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Kayla. Then the people around him rose up and said, We cannot go. Next verse, please. Aha, thank you. And David men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we come to Kaila against the armies of the Philistines? So the thing now confused David again. <laughs> is it that I didn't hear from God? Amen. I think this is for leaders. When you hear clear instructions from God, the voice of men is secondary. No, the voice of men is not in the equation. And when I mean men, I mean those, those, those that are closest to you that you listen to. When you are sure you hear God. So David now ran back. Please, let us understand that in verse 3, God had told him in clear terms, go to the Philistines and destroy them. So when men stood up, David said, Abi, I didn't hear God very well. So in verse 6, verse 6, he went back to God. No, no, not before this verse. That's verse 5. No, 4. Please, please take it back. Then David went back to God again. That, you see, that is where you know God is a merciful God. That God indulges us a lot. If my mom gives me instruction, and you say, okay, Daryl, go and do this. And now... And I'll go back to her and say, Mommy, did you say I should do this? The first thing she will tell me, is your ear deaf when I first told you 
to go and do this. It's just like the default answer for me. Hallelujah. Just telling us about the indulgence of God. And David went back to God again. After men had discouraged him. That God, did you tell me to go? And God told him again. I said you should go. And because of that, David got cheap victory against the Philistines. How that instructions from God gives you gives you victory over challenges and problems. And instruction comes in diverse forms. Instructions from God could be as simple as immediately you finish from office, don't go, just stay around the office. Instructions from God could be Okay, don't go out until so, so, so time. Instruction from God could be just a nudge in your spirit that don't do this thing until a later time. Why? Because there's something God wants to do that we don't know. It comes in diverse forms. And it, 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 when we follow his instructions, we, we become as if we are superhumans. That's the way it appears. We look like we are superhumans. Because everyone around us do not know how we do it. Secondly, why divine instruction? Because it is our birthright. As a believer, divine instruction is your best right. You know when they say something is your birthright, you were given back to with that right. That right comes by reason of your of your birth in that community so as a believer god is compelled to direct you if you hack into his directions psalm 32 verse 8 we are reading that passage together psalm 32 verse 8 psalm 32 verse 8 I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. There is a repetition of I will. I will is not I may. I will is not I might likely do it. I will is I am mandated to do it. Whether you want it or not, I must do it. When I now do it, it's left to you to take it. But in this contract, God will not break, will not breach his own part of the contract. He says, I will undoubtedly. I will teach thee in the way which you should go. That is your best track as a believer. That is why no man can tell me in this congregation that God does not speak to him. The only reason why you would say God does not speak to you is if you are not a believer. But if you have entered into the class of the redeemed of God, God is speaking to you. Open your ears and hear. Amen. Hallelujah. Another passage of the Bible, just to emphasize that God is speaking to you. So you must begin to get conscious of the fact that there is a God that is speaking to me behind my ears every, every time. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Where God is telling you affirmatively that, see, there is no controversy. I am committed to speaking to you. I am committed to guiding you. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou should go. The Holy One of Israel said, I am the one. It is my job to teach you. It is my job to tell you where to go. But when I tell you, 
Are you following it? I pray today by the grace of God that the discipline to follow the instructions of God will come upon us in the name of Jesus. That from today we no longer walk in confusion in the name of Jesus. Confusion leads to frustration. And from frustration you can turn to any other thing. But God is not the author of frustration. The Bible says everything that pertains unto life and godliness belongs to us. That pertains to life and godliness. It is not a believer that should be running a task that does not know what to eat. You don't know where to go. The Bible says the the labor of the, the foolish man wearies him because he does not know how to go in the city. That is not the portion of believers. As a believer, you must know what to do. Immediately you leave the church, you must know where you are going. You must know the steps you will take. Immediately you leave the church, your next step is not to go and eat salamit. Hallelujah. Because some people are, that's what is on their mind now. What is one Pastor Dari is saying? I shall take a party. Amen. You must know what to do, where to go. Go and eat the one, you start purging. May God help you. May God help you in the name of Jesus. I think, I think I'm speaking to some people directly. Flesh and blood did not reveal it to me. The Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. May God order our steps in the name of Jesus.